Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and once again, time for Twit's audience survey. We'd really like to hear from you. It's only going to take a couple of minutes, really, that's all. Just go to twit.tv slash survey and let us know what you think. Your anonymous feedback will help us make Twit even better. And thanks for your continued support. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by IT Pro TV, an easy, entertaining approach to online IT training. Visit itpro.tv slash allaboutandroid and use code AAA30 for a free seven-day trial and 30% off the lifetime of your account. And by LegalZoom. Take control of your family's future and get the legal help you need. Visit LegalZoom.com and enter AAA at checkout for special savings. And by Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. When it comes to the big decision of choosing a mortgage lender, work with one that has your best interest in mind. Use Rocket Mortgage for a transparent, trustworthy home loan process that's completely online at QuickenLoans.com slash Android. Hello and welcome to another episode of All About Android. This is episode 304, recorded on Tuesday, February 7th, 2017, where your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Florence Ion. Yes, you are. And yes, you are. And yes, we are. We are so here. Say, so say we all. So say we all. Excellent. <laughs> uh, I really need to go back and watch that series. We had someone write in. <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, Megan Maroney is here from Tech News Today. Woo! Yay! And iOS today. Yes. I, I, I wanted to introduce you because you were involved in in this little um, mm -hmm. experience. We had someone write into TNT uh, with because we have our how I watch TNT. You know, fans write in to kind of show how that how they get involved. And who was it? It was Leah Dama. It was Leah Dama. Mm -hmm. And I just I, it was a profile picture of Leah Dama. The name was Leah Dama on Twitter, and you know the how I watch thing. I just didn't think about it. I'm like putting it in there, like yeah. So Leah Dama, blah blah. blah. <laughs> She's like, you have seen uh, Battlestar Galactica, right? <laughs> well, we should real. we should t take a moment to to hold our heads down. Richard Hatch has passed away, the oh, original right. Battlestar. Yeah, so that was uh, kind of tribute to him, uh, the original, the OG Battlestar Galactica. Mm -hmm. OG, OG for sure. Yeah. Both good shows. Yeah. Uh, so Megan, welcome to All About Android. Did you ever think that you would be on a, an Android show? I've been waiting for you to invite me. Uh, <laughs> and that's why I cooked up this whole Switch thing originally, because you guys look like you're having so much fun every Tuesday. And I just leave and I think, oh, my. We have a ton of fun. We have a ton of fun on the show. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what we do here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's Android. That was well, pretty, Android. Yeah, Android is just so much. It's just the minefield of fun, yeah. right, Megan? Now, now yeah. you know that you've been exposed to the to the uh, the roller coaster, the emotional roller coaster of Android. Right, because you can only have fun and laugh at yourself, right, when you're mm -hmm. dealing with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, that did. Let me start over. It was really Do over. fun. Do to over. This. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got a lot to talk about. We're going to kind of dive in. Uh, you know, I know that I've mentioned it on this show plenty of times over the past month, but Megan and I have swapped phones for the month. Today is the very last day. So I. Thank God. Oh, you guys feel so strongly about this. <laughs> why, why, why say that? Why, why do you feel that way? Well, thankfully, I'm not enduring another day sitting next to an iPhone. <gasps> it's really that bad? <laughs> I'm really, I'm glad that I haven't been there, that I haven't had to experience that in the indignity flow that you've had to deal with by sitting, <laughs> by having one even like, hey, on the table. You have that? Oh, <laughs> that's right. You have a different phone on you today. It doesn't, mm. it doesn't have to be like this, you guys. Yeah, you promised me that we could all get along, Jason. <laughs> I did. I'm sorry I said that. I gotta, I gotta tell you before, before we go down this rabbit hole, I will say that ju just within the past week since the last show, um, I helped my girlfriend switch from an iPhone to another iPhone, just completely new phone to new phone. And I have never been more frustrated by an awful, god awful process than trying to set up a new phone on iOS. It's like you th yeah. like Android. It's just like you log in and everything's there. And iOS, you have to put in your I, your Apple, uh, whatever, the iTunes password like 90 times. It took forever to do anything. That's so, because it's more secure, Ron Richards. No, no. <laughs> 
No, I don't think so. <laughs> hmm, interesting. And, but, and meanwhile, yeah. like my job, my because so many Android devices come out through the course of a year, I'm so used to the process of switching sure, from yeah. Android device to Android device. I almost feel like I, I'm clouded. My judgment is clouded there. I don't know whether it's better or worse than that. I just know that I've adapted and I well, have a way to do it that's fine by me and easy for me. Yeah, well, the, th the thing about it was that I wanted to keep an open mind. And I'm like, all right, this will be a fun experience for me or whatever. And it's just like, and you can even ask her. I mean, it was it was to the point of frustration, like where you just, we had to put the phone down and walk away a couple of times because, mm -hmm. and, and the thing is that like, that's how it used to be on Android four or five years ago, but it has improved to the point where it's very seamless to set up a new phone. Right. Uh, wait, wait, so, wait yeah. Ron, was it more frustrating than the time your Nexus 9 broke? <sighs> Uh, yes, I will say yes, because I did, because it's a very, she got the iPhone SE, so it's a very small screen and it was hard to do anything Ew. on that screen. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> so it's a small screen thing too. But I will, I will give it credit that I really do like the form factor. Talk about bezels and stuff like that. It's, it's that it's the old iPhone with the metal around the side. Mm. The chamfered right? edges. Yeah. Right? That's a, that's a mm -hmm. really nice design. That's a really nice industrial design. And so I'll, I'll, I'll I, I applaud Apple for continuing having that design live on in a in a form factor that works for people who want a smaller phone so at least they have options yeah that's true that's but entering true. passwords i agree on ios is not it's, it's ridiculous it is it's hard ridiculous. and you can't see and you have to yeah. last pass isn't as seamless or whatever password uh, management app you use isn't as seamless because mm -hmm. they don't let you in i mean i was joking about it being you know less secure that's why it's easier but yeah. there is a little bit of that yeah yeah which we'll get more into That's in right. just a minute. That's right. We're going to be discussing <laughs> what it's like, uh, what it has been like for Megan to switch from iOS to Android. And then, of course, at the end of this evening, uh, we switch back. It's back to normal, back to normal life again. Thank God. <laughs> We're also going to say goodbye, probably, to the Google Now launcher. Uh, <laughs> the Nexus returns, but with a different name, kind of. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, using data to design address. Progressive web apps are growing up. They got their big their the big kid pants on now and a whole lot more. Uh, we don't we're not really jumping into news yet. So you've got nothing to nothing to roll to, Brian. Uh, cuz we're going <laughs> to we'll get to that in a second That's, in a minute. Uh, not even like a like a a, an Apple and an Android guy come in and go <laughs> kind of, yeah, if, if I had thought ahead, we would have made that, but we don't have that. Um, but we do have Megan who has spent the last 30 days transitioned away from iOS into Android. Now we should preface and say that this is not your first experience in the world with Android. Before iOS, you were an Android user. What did you use? I used a Samsung uh, Galaxy S, I think it was a five. Okay. I also had a three. Okay. I think I had five and three. I had an HTC One. Okay, so you had some experience. So you weren't, yeah, you're not completely. Where, no. did you, where did we go wrong? Where did we leave you? <laughs> That's a good That's question. A, that is a great question that no one's asked. Where did you go wrong? Um, I can't really answer that question. I think uh, mainly it was this job. <laughs> <laughs> I got hired. <laughs> there was an opening for someone who knew about iOS. And I have been an all all my life used Macs and and that. And so I think that it was an easy transition uh, to iOS. And then I'd liked it. You know, I mean, if you that's the thing, like if you need an iOS expert, it's not that hard to catch up really fast mm -hmm. <laughs> as mm -hmm. an expert, whereas, you know, with Android. So, yeah, you didn't. I never, uh, I never really spent a lot of time digging into Android, but you know, as I said on our last show, when we just talked about this, if, I mean, it, I always bought Android phones because they were less expensive. Mm -hmm. And also I was a long time Sprint user and you couldn't get an iPhone on Sprint for a long time. Yep. So that was part of it too. And I did have that same attitude. I, I'm understanding that attitude of just like when people say like, oh, what is that Android phone? Like, I don't like that because I like iPhones because everyone has an iPhone. I And I think that is, uh, I, I've never liked that attitude either. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that there are things to like about both phones. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it's funny because we jo we joke about the about the, comp the the friendly competition, the distinguished competition, yes. as I like to call it. And and that said, though, I I like that there's choice, and I do believe, or I do think that there are some people who iOS is a good answer for them, and for some people, Android is a good answer for them. You know, going back to the example of my girlfriend a couple you know a couple of weeks ago, months ago, whatever, she said, you know, I'm I might be getting a new phone soon, you know, and if you want to try to sell me on switching to Android. 
I'll I'll hear it. And I was like, no, nah, you stay on iOS. Like, I think that that's a good fit. I think it works for you, you know, and 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 if you're if you're tied into the Apple ecosystem versus tied, being tied into the Google or the Amazon ecosystem, like those are all choices to make as well as your uh, propensity for challenges and like figuring stuff out. Right. You know, I feel like, you know, like I, I feel like there, there are some of us are tinkerers and some of us just wanted to, you know, wanted to not have to think about stuff. And that, that's not that's a, a total delineation and say that iOS is for people who don't want to think, but it definitely it controls the experience or Android allows you to customize more. Apple makes decisions for you. And that that ends up being the running joke is Apple knows how you want to use your phone and they know more than you. But there's a certain comfort from that, from a usability standpoint, from a user standpoint, for users that don't want to, to be super kind of nerdy about how they customize and get everything fitting just right. Some people just want a phone that works, that does the the things that it does and does it well. And I, yeah. from my month long experience with iOS, I feel like that they've, Apple's done a really great job achieving that with, mm -hmm. with the iPhone. Well, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I'll tell I feel my like I'm Tim. pouring praise on you, <laughs> Megan. <laughs> <Yes. for> the, <laughs> I'll tell the, Tim that you said that. Excellent. Next time I talk. appreciate that. Tell him oh, if he wants to come Tim. on the show and to give us his perspective. We would love to have him. Yeah. Wait, hold on. T Tim, Tim doesn't care. He doesn't. He, he, he inherited all this. He's just he, he's just managing shareholder uh, value. That's all. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> true. Yeah, little that's known true. fact, but Tim Cook was also on Android until 2014 as well. Right. So. No, I what? just made that up. That's fake news. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Don't well, fake news us. Don't you do that. I'm just kidding. All right. So, um, well, I have to... Okay, so Samsung S3, S5. I mean, those, you know, that was Samsung's S3 vision. S3 was great. S5 was not. What's that? S3 was great. S3 S5 was, was great. not. S5 was not. Let us not speak ill of the GS3. Okay, so why do you say that? What was so great about it? I can't remember. It was the last great <laughs> Samsung phone before the S6. Okay. Right, the S5 was bad. The S5 was I, I, even I remember the S5 yeah. being a bad launch, a bad phone. Yeah, so that yeah. could have been part it's of the, the way, it's part just of the way it through. ranks. Yeah, mm -hmm. was the S5 the plasticky one? Yeah, yes. it was waterproof. It was the last plasticky one, but it was water resistant. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, I mean, Android's changed a lot. Yeah. Uh, since then. Mm -hmm. Well, JJ in the chat room asked, "Would I give a Android phone to my children?" I did give that S5. I did hand it down to my 12 year old daughter. And do they still talk to you? No, she did not. Oh. Uh, like literally, none of her the other twelve year olds they didn't know what it was. They yeah. like even adults around her were like, like, "What, what is they're that? Like, what did your mom yeah. give you?" It was here? that's yeah. the problem. I know it was. I mean, they are indoctrin yeah. on indoctrinated. Yeah. Indoctrinated it scares me so young. much. I don't. I don't know if I can have children in a world where everybody uses an iPhone. <laughs> that is, that well. is a true statement. I think you should put that on a shirt, Flo. <laughs> I mean, of all the things, of all the perils in this world, that is one thing I cannot. That's right up there at the top of the list. Yeah, no, don't I know it uh, as a parent. Um, all right, so you 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 switched away. What what are kind of some of the things that that struck you right away in switching to Android? Like first first week, how were you feeling um, transitioning away from something you were super comfortable with and going into Android? Did you feel like it was seamless? everything was there that you wanted to be or was it totally different? It was not seamless, but as we've talked about before, part of that is just our brains and we don't like change and we have these yes. pathways that we like to follow and things we like to do. I mean, you know, on iOS, I just, this is how I found apps. I swiped down and I mm -hmm. typed and there they were. And, you know, you just have to swipe up on the pixel. It's not that big of a deal, but just just my finger wanted to swipe down. Yeah, so that, right. That's muscle memory, right? right I mean, exactly. that's that you're used to doing something. And so, yeah. But. I mean, that happened right before we started the show where it was like we needed to adjust the brightness on your phone and you swipe, swiped up from the bottom. And I now know on iOS, that's how you adjust the brightness and mm -hmm. the volume, you know, certain media volume and everything is you swipe up from the bottom. Mm -hmm. But uh, see, that's wrong. The right way is to swipe it from the top down. That's the right way. For this show, that, that probably is the right way. You're right. Oh, so, yeah, the buttons on the side. You know, it's frustrating to always be doing the same thing and getting a different result. Okay, so explain that. So you mean the volumes on the side, sometimes they didn't pull up the same, kind of, they weren't controlling the same things? Well, we, you know, you have a volume up and volume down button on the iPhone 7. It is um, I do. on the other side. It is on the other on the side. Left yes. side. So, yeah. So I was constantly pressing the button when you know there was only one button, uh, and then there's the switch to to turn 
Oh, uh, the do uh, not disturb just switch. Just do not disturb switch. And iPhone. I just and that was a funny thing that we realized. That's strange that the iPhone has the switch, and the the Android phone did not have the switch because it seems like that's a very unlike uh, you know I O Apple Some thing. Some phones have it. Like Some the do. OnePlus, OnePlus right. has yeah. it. Yeah, that's right. The OnePlus did. Was it just yeah, the OnePlus but, One or the OnePlus Three? Well, the three has it. Uh, it I forget. Many. I think the three T yeah. has it too. Yeah. No, but yeah, but that's a very non-Jobsian kind of thing. Like, like Steve Jobs right. didn't want any buttons on the dang thing at all. Mm -hmm. You know, so you know the fact that there's a physical switch is is one of the many concessions that Apple has made in a post-Steve Jobs world. Right. Yeah. But once but I discovered, see, if you want D and D, okay, sorry, Megan, go ahead. <laughs> Once I Sorry. discovered the do not disturb that lets you really customize and like, right. do not disturb for an hour, do not disturb for eight yep. hours, do not disturb till I turn that off. I was like, oh, this is better. Yeah, that's what I was going to riff on. <laughs> because it's managing it kind of automatically. You don't have to think about a switch. I mean, I can imagine that the, the reason that a switch is nice is because on the fly without having to think about it, it's like, well, I want to go into do not disturb mode right now. Mm -hmm. Click, you flick it. Having said that, I had the the iPhone for a month, and I think I used that switch once. I, you know, I what what I realized about myself is I always keep my phone muted for the most part. You know, maybe mm -hmm. maybe on vibrate or whatever, I kept this always off. But maybe part of that is because I always had the Apple Watch on, mm -hmm. so it would vibrate, and so I didn't need my phone to really bark at me at all. Mm -hmm. You know, but I just point. never touched it. Yeah, that I mean, that was something that I definitely missed getting my notifications. Uh, on my Apple Watch, and mm -hmm. so I do often have my phone on mute as well. So now, but you were using at least for the first half, you were using my Generation One Moto 360. I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> <laughs> only because it's old, and it you know it was one of the first Android big. Wear devices. It's big, uh, the battery's not as good. I mean. But but you were still able to get notifications and mm -hmm. stuff on your wrist in that regard. But yeah. it was different. Yeah, it was different. I mean, I used I also used the Fitbit Surge, which I had, uh, and and that was good for working out and measuring my heart rate. Uh, but it was really ugly, so I couldn't wear that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Flo. I mean, sometimes. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. Um, and so yeah, I never found something that was as good at notifications and fitness mm -hmm. as the Apple Watch. Apple Watch is good for fitness. I really did not use it for fitness at all. Mm -hmm. um, but I could see why it would be a good, uh, you know, a good wearable for that. Oh uh, yeah, I think it's good for someone who likes to track their fitness, and also someone who needs to be encouraged to to uh, work out. Neither of which is a problem for you. So. Uh yeah, okay. You know what? I agree with Megan. Wearables on Android are terrible. <laughs> and uh, but the the thing the thing about uh, it, yeah, and, I, and I, I agree too. But I think I think the Apple Watch as a piece of hardware is a nicer design yeah. watch than the other watches that are available. But I'm not convinced that Apple has figured out wearable from an OS standpoint no. compared to Android Wear. So no, it has not. You are right about yeah. that. But I mean, it has like bells and whistles that people actually want. Like it's really you know it's it's nice enough to wear every day. It's it's a very stylish device um, and. Some people even have Apple Pay on it. Yeah, you know, and that's one thing I meant mm -hmm, to set up. That's one thing you yeah, told me too. And yeah. for some, for whatever reason, because I'm very easily overwhelmed by things like this, in order <laughs> for me to set it up, it, I had to call the bank or oh. whatever, and I just never got around to it. I was like, no, I'm not calling a bank to oh. set it up. Um, I used Android I'm sure Pay. that would have been super helpful. I, yeah. I, I enjoyed, you think of Android Pay? I loved it because you just tap. It was almost easier. I never used wow. Android Pay on the... Okay the watch but it's it did seem easier because you didn't have you to can't, yeah you yeah. can't use it on the watch that's the problem oh yeah. you can't you have the actual hardware not yeah. yet oh. it's rumored that the next update and possibly the next crop of watches that we may hear about any day now would have at least one of them might have that sort of capability mm -hmm. but we won't know that until sometime this week i'm guessing yeah well that's but i'm throwing a tantrum because apple Watch has had it this you yeah. know i just well, like and that one darn thing I want on me all the time. Absolutely. That's that's one really great feature of having a wearable, at least when you're talking about this kind of, uh, you know, walletless payments sort of thing. It's it's nice to remove any friction whatsoever for it to work seamlessly and everything. And if it's going to work right off your watch, that's one less thing you have to, you know, reach in your pocket, pull mm -hmm. out your phone and everything. Uh, but and I felt really bad that Megan had the choice of watches that she did because I feel like we could have done more justice. With, wearable platform, but well, but what, but what, what would have been a, a better watch for Megan? I, I think that maybe of, a Huawei watch. Huawei watch Huawei though is watch still pretty big. 
I don't know. How do you watch. feel about big watches? <laughs> Women that's a little smaller. Well, I wore, I mean, th- I wore that watch, which um, looks normal on you, which means it's yeah. probably pretty big on <laughs> yeah, me. I was going to say it looks normal, <laughs> but I realized, you know, I, it's on me. So maybe that's the difference. But. <laughs> I like big watches. I didn't mind the Moto, oh, I didn't okay. mind the size of the Moto 360. Mm-hmm. It was the battery would, it was really the fitness part. And it's, it's two years old. It's older than the yeah. original Apple watch, but it was just super frustrating because I would go running and it would just die in the middle of the run. And that was Oh no. Oh, I know. And then it's that's like, great. you didn't run at all, right? That's the worst. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it never <laughs> happened. Don't run unless it's tracked. I mean. <laughs> I just don't understand. Yeah. So there, there's like these like bells and whistles, like you said, fun things. I have um, my fitness connected to, you know, my dad and Leo and a couple of my friends. So we compete uh-huh. on the Apple right. Watch with that. And, you know, I can swim with it. I can shower with it, all these things. And, you know, using Apple Pay on the watch, it's not that much harder than taking your credit card, but it's the cool factor it's just like yes you know i know yeah and And it it works every time would you say no Oh, okay. See, that would be enough for me to be like, well, then I'm out. And that has been enough for me to be out. Android pay doesn't work all the time either on the phone. I mean, Android pay doesn't work all the time on the phone. I know. That's why I never use it because, because for whatever reason, like the cool factor of touching my phone to pay is not like better to me than than something that always works. Mm-hmm. You know well, what I mean? It does work. It's so satisfying. Like yeah. when you just walk into CVS and just have to pay. But anytime like, I go to use it, I'm, I stress that it's not going to work. And what do I have to do then at that point? Like well, it's just not worth more, the mental that's, anguish. That, yeah, that's more That's more of a Jason problem, I think, than a technology no, problem. No, but it that's, is a technology <laughs> problem. If it's not going to work 100% of the time, then you're not going to yeah, get everybody right. to use it. Yeah. That's fair. You that's don't want fair. that anxiety. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. APA yeah. is what the, I think that's what it is in the DSM. For Android pay anxiety. Oh, <laughs> this is the thing. <laughs> Apparently, this is the thing. Great. Thank you. Hey, can I can I ask, was there anything that just like did not work on Android that really frustrated you that you just really missed from iOS? That's a good question. Besides the things that we've uh, talked. Like about- one thing where you were like, oh, I wish I had my iPhone back. Like. Well, there was the one cool app that you guys all missed, the face app that turned you into an old person or changed your gender right. that wasn't available. Yeah, that, that, that was on I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say I missed that, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Just personally. Yeah. Uh, no, I really I really missed the the Apple Watch, I think, and I missed being able to reply to my uh, my messages on Apple Watch. Well, I missed iMessage, really, and we've talked about that before. I mean, you're in the same boat a lot of, and I'm sure it's the same way with you, Ron. I mean, your girlfriend uses, uh, uses I, well, she has an iPhone. I don't know yeah. if she uses iMessage, but there's nothing else that everybody uses. And well, yeah, there's, there, well, well, you're right. I mean, don't, and now, now you're, I was talking earlier about the minefield. Um, but the messaging, the messaging uh, morass is just what pisses me off on a daily basis. Uh, but the solution is is WhatsApp. That's the, I mean, yeah. like that's what it is, or or a or Allo, or a unifying messaging platform that works on both on both platforms that lets people talk to each other and doesn't hinder them by whether or not they have a certain phone or or whatnot. I mean, I'm go- another friend of mine just switched from iOS to a Pixel, and he's having a hell of a time sending videos to his family the way he did with iMessage because it would, you know, it would send and he's running into the file size limit with yeah. MMS and things like, and all these kind of problems. I'm like, dude, just move over to get, move, move to WhatsApp. He's like, right. But then I yeah. got to move my parents to WhatsApp. And like, mm-hmm. that's the, like Apple helped destroy any possibility of universal messaging platform. And if they, it's, it's a, it's a crime if you ask me, but mm. anyway. That's Sorry. strong words. No, I agree. This yeah. is not, um, you know, this is definitely Apple's fault. They want people to stay in that walled garden, but it is yep. super, I mean, it is, it, yeah. I mean, I think that you, the other thing that I found in this last month was that if anything goes wrong, if anyone that knows that you're switching to Android temporarily, or maybe if you're on Android, anyone I knew, if anything went wrong, they would say, oh, it must be because you're on an Android phone. Like I couldn't send right. you an image because you're on an Android phone. I'm like, no, you could send me an image. Like I don't mm-hmm. think yeah. that's the problem. Right. Yeah. They're blaming yes. it all on people. That happens to you guys in real life too? I, I think there's a lot of assumptions me. that are made for sure. Absolutely. My yeah. friends, my friends, I hate my green phone. The I'm the green, green bubble to yeah. everybody. Mm-hmm. I'm flow yeah. green bubble ion. And so are your friends all using iMessages? I have, well, they are if you're if you're green bubble, but does that mean that you're then excluded from certain conversations? Thankfully no, because I am That loved. you know of. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, you have to start your own group messages. That's what I found. As long as you start it and you create it, then you're there. Well, there are some, we'll see there's some texting apps on Android that do the MMS thing really well for group chat, which helps for people with like Textra is really good at that. Mm -hmm. So I'm always part of that. And I can still get iMessages when you're texting me via Wi-Fi, which is nice. Yeah, which is kind of neat. I just can't do that. I just can't do the same Mm -hmm. unless I'm using an app like WhatsApp. Right. And Which I don't. Yeah, yeah. And you can't send like balloons or, uh, you know, that's the other thing. When people would send me fireworks, uh, it would just uh-huh. say sent with celebration. <laughs> 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 that's, that's, that's so joyous. Um, so it's stupid, just, that's stupid bells and whistles. It's just like okay. lipstick on a pig. It, there there are absolutely bells and whistles. And there are pig, there are stickers with pigs with lipstick that you can yeah, send. No. That's just, <laughs> but Apple, but Apple... Ha- knows its audience, I would say, right? Like going back to what I was saying earlier, kind of a phone that isn't capable of all of this like super nerdy customization, but also so so it appeals to a, a, a wide group of people that just want a phone that works, uh, but also includes kind of visual enhancements that just kind of make, I would say many people would probably say it makes the experience enjoyable, you know? And, and some people might feel like that's like you say, Ron, putting lipstick on a pig, some would say that that enhances the experience. It makes it kind of right. nicer because it's kind of, you know, it rounds the edges a little bit. And when you launch into an app, instead of the app just clunkily appearing, it's like the interface like zooms into that app and the transition is fluid and, you know, kind of seamless. And little things like that kind of add up as you use the OS over time. It's like Adobe After Effects. Kind of, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. But everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> everywhere throughout the experience. So going back to what you were saying as far as like people blaming Android when things didn't work, one thing that I've noticed that people have said since I've been doing this and a lot of people on social media is, oh no, we're going to lose him or something along those yes, lines. People being really, that. people being, Android uh, users being really afraid <laughs> that the minute somebody <laughs> on Android goes to iOS, they're not coming back. Yes. Where, where does that come from? Well, I'll be honest, Jason. I, I've had some sleepless nights this past month thinking okay. about this. Okay, but where does that come from? Why Why are Android users so insecure? Because you're the minority. Because we know. Because <laughs> we know what? We know that, because we know sometimes things aren't as perfect as they could be. We know that they could yeah. be more polished. We know that there's a little bit more work to be done until things are just 100% perfect. And we know that coming from an Apple perspective it's such a different experience. And like Megan said, people are resistant to change. And like you were saying, how you were overwhelmed by all this stuff. I have a feeling maybe people just get really overwhelmed by, you know, how much is really in Android and how much easier it is to just use iOS. Right. Well, yeah, and and I think also, I mean, and Flo, I I think you're right with a lot of that. I, I, I don't think that the, Android not being 100% perfect is a good argument because neither is iOS. I mean, iOS has a lot, isn't perfect either. But I think that there's an inherent, um, well, first off, Jason, you're in a unique position where you are there in that chair every week for the I past mean, five yeah, years. It's, kind of, my, it's kind of my job, yeah. <laughs> right, there's a little bit of that. But there's also a sense of, and I'll go I'll go here, but there's also a sense that if we were going to translate a- the difference between Android and iOS to, oh, I don't know, high school, Right. Oh. That the that, that the the iOS is kind of the cool kids table and the Android is kind of the freaks yes. and geeks table. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing worse than when one day one of the freaks and geeks all of a sudden gets accepted into the flock of the cool kids. So and true. you're all like, no, don't take them so away from true. us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we can't lose yeah. you, Jason. Right. We just can't. Well, I don't yep. If you guys worried that you were going to lose me, like that, that would, that would be me choosing a platform and then choosing to not have a job. One. <laughs> right. Or you'd have to, you could have my job. That's um, true. Well, one, one switch shows. I mean, honestly. We have a lot of fun here. It's true. I know it is fun. So I said that it's because you're the minority and I would hope that no one heard me because I know that's I not true. Yeah. <laughs> I know everyone in the chat. I almost also did, but I let me. it go. Yeah. yeah I no, know we're, it's we're, not true. So why yeah. does it feel like it is? I mean, is it, uh, Yeah. I mean, even even in the United States, you're not the minority. There are more Android Android users in the United States than iPhone users. Because of the low end phones, though, that's why. Because of the wide variety of different types of phones. Because the low, like the lower end phones. I mean, I guess the GS7, the Samsung phones are really great sellers, but 
I, well, I, I know you're right. You're right, Flo. I think I, I think that there's the there's the economic divide, which is a big thing. Mm -hmm. But also, like, what I find fascinating is like, okay, so so history often doesn't reflect the actual events that occur. It reflects people's interpretation of those events, right? Mm -hmm. So, what is seen as the birth of the smartphone, right? In 2007, when Steve Jobs unveiled the iPhone, right? Yeah, the modern we all day know, smartphone for sure. Yeah. We all know we had smartphones before the iPhone. I had yes, one. Yes, we did. You know, like I had I had that big clunky HTC phone running window, Windows Mobile or whatever. It was a smartphone. It ran apps. It did all this sort of stuff, right? But it's we true. see iPhone as the birth of the smartphone, which it, which is because it was the birth of the first instance of somebody getting it right, which I'll totally give them that credit for, and reinventing the category. Mm -hmm. But um, and then from there, yeah. it's set. FT flow. Oh no, I was just gonna say true that, true that. Oh, yeah, and so it's so so it set it set the it set the uh, the tempo for the past ten years where the iPhone was the cherished device and the and Android was somewhat oh okay well that's it you know if you can't afford that or if you don't want that or or if you're a tinkerer if you're a maker if you're you know if you're a techie then you can go on the Android side and I think that narrative has persisted um, up you know and case in point it took till 2016 for Google to roll out a a $650 Android phone, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. That's my theory. My I'm a, I'm a, I'm an armchair sociologist, sociologist. I can't say the word though. <laughs> well, so, I, sociologist is sociological. <laughs> yeah. like a um, I'm also want to admit that we're on, we're all on coastal bubbles as well. Like, I mean, yes. you just, yes, just to admit are. it as much as we would not like to believe that we are, we are in a sure. bubble. And so a lot of the people that we spend time with happen to have iPhones. So it feels right. more like, you know, that they're the majority when they're not. We're the latest Android phone. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing. A lot of people have the latest Android phone. I mean, mm -hmm. I feel like when you venture further out into the suburbs here in the Bay Area, like you will see the phones, the demographic of phones change. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's it's quite fascinating, actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, what we I, okay? You and I have talked a lot about the switch this week already. I was on iOS today yesterday, uh, talking about kind of my experience uh, going to iOS and back. Today on TNT, we covered the five things that we both like and dislike about the platforms that we've experienced tonight. We're talking about your experience, uh, obviously coming from iOS to Android and everything. Uh, what What is your final thought in the, in the process? Was this uh, educational? Like, what what do you walk away from this with about Android? Um, I think that they're much more similar than uh, I had thought. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, and and just how. It's hard to say like Android versus iOS because I was really, it's really what we did was a Pixel versus an iPhone 7, which is a d very specific mm -hmm. uh, experience. And I would say that there, that really I, I spent a lot of times because a lot of people have said, oh, you just don't like to, you know, you're not a hacker. You're not, you know, you're not a real techie. You don't really like to, to mess with your phone. And so that's why you don't like it. You just want your phone to do what you want it to do. And you don't want to have to do any work into it. And I do think that the parts of technology that really interest me are the the sociological parts of it, the way the privacy and the way we're sharing our data and just, you know, like I was talking about, like the fact that we live in this bubble and what technology is doing to us in that way. As far as like looking through my file system on my phone, like that's not what has ever interested me. Replacing your launcher or, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. I mean, I was, I'm not going to lie. It was exciting to put apps wherever I wanted them and not have them snap to the, <laughs> to the grid like they do in iOS, yeah, but that, that could only take me. me so far. And so I, I realized, you know, it's okay for me to like iOS, to just have the phone do what I want it to do and not think about it anymore. It doesn't make me not a, you know, a critical thinker or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's mm -hmm. just what I want from a phone and that's okay. Yeah. We are, we're pretty adaptable, us human beings. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think for me, um, and I may have already said this on one of the other millions of shows that we've talked about this on, um, but for me, <laughs> very, very similar to what you're saying. I went into it not knowing what I was going to experience on iOS because I had never spent this kind of time with it, but walk away from it realizing how, how easy it really is to adapt. But there's preferences that kind of fall in line there too. Which, which side do I identify more with? Android, probably because I'm more familiar with it definitely because I, I do it for work you know that's definitely an aspect of it too but in general I just I'm more engaged with Android than I am 
with iOS, and that's a personal preference thing. When you get down to the technology, they both do almost the same exact stuff. They just do it a little bit differently, sometimes a lot differently. Sometimes it's the exact same. And that's just the way it is. I think I think that's a great that's a great thing, Jason. What are you yeah. engaged to? I'm engaged to this platform. <laughs> <laughs> We've been, Android and I have been married for five years now. I'm so and, happy for you guys. I mean, you're, you're making it work, Jason. You know, you're adapting, you're compromising, you know, like, you know, you keep it spicy every we now talk, and then. We talk yeah, a lot. That's why you're changing up partners. Yep. I mean. Jeez, <laughs> oh, no. I've, I've got like four, three, four, flow. three, four, five different Android partners every single year. It's, it's yeah, I'm always you truly, you truly are in the, you, you belong in the Bay Area, Jason, with that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite how I thought this segment would end, but hey, there we go. Leave uh, it to us. I, I didn't even us. get to talk about Daydream. Oh, what do you think, real quick? I, oh, yes, I mean, yes, yes. That, now, Daydream was the thing that really, uh, I mean, iPhone has nothing like this. Mm -hmm. And it was fun, and it was, um, you know, this is very well made. This is very, you know, I think like. It was like sweatpants. Uh, it, it does, yes, yeah, sweatpants <laughs> for your face. <laughs> and I I really loved it. And I mean, I'm going to talk about an app later that I loved so much. But I mean, just being able to look at YouTube videos that are in 360, um, just being able to look at my own photos, yeah. uh, that, that was amazing. And to um, just try some of the apps and realize that this is the future and it's not, it doesn't cost as much as the other VR that we talk about these, that you require a giant PC and all this computing power. It's just a fun add on. Uh, and I think Google was really smart to just introduce it with just the, the pixel with their phone in the beginning, because it is something that nobody else has. Mm -hmm. And they're broadening it out now. Um, although I will say, so ZTE Axon 7, which I have here, I've literally been updating to Nougat all afternoon. And I don't even think wow. it's done. 99%. Oh, I'm at 99%. By the time it's time for me to show off apps on this, it's going to be updating. So that'll be oh, an experience. Geez. Hopefully it'll Speaking ask me before it does that. Speaking Anyways. of that, I've got I've got the everybody last week we were talking about the uh, the predicted demise of Nextbit and whether or not they're going to roll out Nuga. I just got the uh, update for where their beta program for the uh, the third update for the Nuga beta. So I think oh, they're okay. they're still they're still working on it. So that's good. Excellent. So you're going to hmm. be in the Nuga. All, all in the nougat. All up in the nougat. Yeah. Uh, well, I've, I've I'm been. We're waiting. We're waiting for them to roll it out to all the other Robin users. Got it. Uh, got it. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, we've got things to talk about. <laughs> a lot of things to talk about, and we're already running a little long, so we'll wheel it back here. But before we get into kind of a little bit of news, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode. That is IT Pro TV. Uh, opportunities in the tech industry are growing faster than in any other job market. There's really just no time like the new year to start a new career, realize that you need to make a change. You want to get in tech, you want to move up the ladder, uh, but you don't want to go back to school to do it. IT Pro TV is the best way to stay up to date with current IT certifications. IT Pro TV offers over 2,000 hours of content. More than 30 hours are added every week. Um, very similar in many ways to kind of the twit model of programming. You can go there. They've got a live stream. You can tune right in. You can stream courses uh, live or on demand uh, worldwide. Chromecast support, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, PC. They recently launched their Apple TV app. So if you have an Apple TV, you can pull it up on their new app. Uh, all sorts of course topics, of course, include certified information system security, a uh, professional, there's CompTIA, CompTIA Project Plus, Ethical Hacking, version 9. They have other upcoming courses like AWS Solutions, uh, Pen Testing, Networking Plus, uh, all sorts, all, all kinds. And you can kind of scan through there and find the content that works for what you're looking for. Transcripts uh, included as well. That lets you follow from start to finish, or you can even jump to any part of the video. <sighs> Hundreds of step-by-step uh, -step virtual machine labs and transcender practice exams. That's $109 value. IT Pro TV's clients include Harvard, MIT, UCSD, Stanford, and more. And you can take advantage of their low monthly subscription price and no hassle cancellation policy. Premium annual uh, memberships are normally $57 a month or $570 per year, but we have a special offer for our listeners, you can get a free seven-day trial and 30% off the lifetime of your account uh, if you go to itpro.tv slash allaboutandroid and use code AAA30. 
IT Pro TV will introduce a new membership level soon, and all current premium members will be granted the highest membership level available. So sign up today so you can get in on that. Visit itpro.tv slash allaboutandroid, and make sure to use the code AAA30, and uh, you'll get that deal. And we thank IT Pro TV for their support of All About Android. It's great to have you guys on board. All right, Brian, I promised you that we'd give you the opportunity. It's time for the news. The great Twitch switch is over, and we realize we can all get along, even if Android's better. It's now time for the news. Boo! It's, a, ho it's a hopeful message from the Android newsman. I love it. Thank you, Android um, newsman. Yes. Well, uh, on 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 the edge of the, those hopeful words, we get some sad news. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but as Jason mentioned at the top of the show, it looks like the Google Now launchers days are numbered. Uh, according to emails that Google's been sending out to their OEM partners, uh, they're preparing for the transition away from the Google Now launcher sometime in Q1. Um, here are the details that we have learned. Devices already using the launcher will be unaffected. Uh, the, Apple, uh, the Google Now launcher app will be removed from the Play Store for everybody else. And there will be no more updates to the Google Now launcher. So one would say that this is probably a move in advance of migrating over to the assistant-based Pixel launcher, right? But there's no word if that consolidation is actually what is, what is going to happen. Um, wondering if the Pixel launcher someday will be remain, renamed to something like Google Assistant Launcher and be open to everybody to download from the Google Play Store like the Google Now launcher was. Have to imagine um, if they if they open it up to everyone yeah. that it couldn't just stay Pixel launcher, right? Right. That it'd be it'd be Google Assistant maybe or yeah. I don't know. Um, but it's also important to remember way back that the Google Now launcher was first exclusive to Nexus devices before they rolled it out in a more broad uh, case. So uh, you got to imagine that that's what's happening here. That's my guess. Uh, what do you guys think? I, I think that it behooves Google to get assistant on as many devices as possible, even though when they first launched it, it was kind of isolated Agreed. to just Pixel devices. I, I don't necessarily think that that's good for Google's kind of ad strategy to have just this narrow you know market of, of devices uh using assistance so if this is one way that it, that it brings it to more platforms i think that's great um you've been using the google now launcher on the pixel mm -hmm. do you like the google now launcher did you use any other launchers to i did because i had to compare because yeah. i was like i don't know what to compare this to yeah. um and i tried the nova launcher and mm -hmm. i tried one that leo recommended early on too and i can't even remember what is it, it's whatever oh, he uses is it I want to say it's Action Launcher. Action Launcher. Yeah, yeah yes. it's Action Launcher yeah. 3. Yeah. Uh, and I tried it. And yeah, I do think I went back to uh, the, the Pixel Launcher. What's it called? Yep, Pixel, Pixel Launcher. launcher. <laughs> yep, Pixel Launcher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it did seem like the most intuitive to me. Yeah. That, that's the thing. Is I used to be really bullish on launchers. Remember, like I used to love the wacky launchers and oh, all yeah. stuff like that. And now I, t I t tell people, they're like, oh, should I get Nova or Action or whatever? And I'm like, no, use use the use use the launcher that came with it. I mean, like I, I'm starting to believe that the the vision, unless you have a very specific need to tinker and you want, you know, one of the other bells and whistles that the launchers give. But like the the Pixel launcher is pretty, pretty sweet as far as I'm concerned. I always thought the Google Now launcher was pretty nice, uh, but that's just me. I'm growing more conservative in my old age. I I mean I feel you, Ron. Um, yeah. My my days of, of flashing new ROMs to my phone every single day. I remember I that. I mean every single day. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody no. got time for that. There was uh, strangely there was a time in my life where I had time for that. That yeah. I remember now. That. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, having a replacement launcher that does everything under the moon and more isn't necessary for all people, but it's a nice option to have. And that option still exists. We might actually um, be bringing on uh, Kevin Barry, who develops the Nova launcher on the show sometime Ooh, in the next cool. coming weeks. So we'll That'd have him on. We can ask him all about kind of that transition and more mm -hmm. and what it's like to develop uh, the Nova launcher. Well... But Speaking of the proliferation of Google Assistant, uh, the good news is that it appears the 6P and the 5X might be getting it after all. So it's not going to be this, uh, you know, very narrowly mm -hmm. released sort of, uh, you know, software feature that's just for the Pixel. Uh, Stephen Hall from 9to5Google has a source that says the 5, 5X and 6P will get the Assistant, Google Assistant, in the next major update. There is kind of 
I mean, I'm curious what it's going to, I guess it's going to be implemented, like on the Pixel, just the long press. Yeah, that's that's what I'm wondering, too. If it, it, Maybe these two stories tie in together in the sense that... What will the launcher look like? Like, will it look anything like the Pixel with the fact that you have to see what the weather is like in your area for that day? <laughs> what, you don't like seeing the weather all the time? Oh. No, I mean, I appreciate it, but, you know, I'd like the option to not see the weather. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, you have to the, see the weather. On that on that top area. Yeah, and you can't do anything. No, you, well, can't do anything. Customization, schmustomization. You're right. <laughs> on that particular oh, launcher, that yeah. is something that doesn't go away. I think I made wow, those are some fighting words, Megan. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, maybe you need to see the weather. I'm just realizing we're still casting from your phone. Your phone's oh. almost out of battery. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> That's not going to be where, very good when we get to the arena. So let <laughs> me go ahead. Red alert. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he's like, he's like going to tell me how to do it. I, th well, I, I think the, yeah, the weather. Yeah, actually, the that would be great. Yeah, we distract the situation by asking, should Google Assistant be on more than just the devices that come out of Google HQ? Yes, I think. Uh, yeah, I Absolutely. think Google. The I more, think Google should want that. The more the more uh, users using the assistant and learning and letting assistant see how they, they you know they need to get to a critical mass, well, yeah, and I think that's absolutely required. And so they they've got to expand past the the pixel. Yeah. Well, well the good news is that assistant is also I forgot to mention this, but assistant is also rolling out to Android TV, uh, the Nvidia Ooh. Shield. And Google did say right. it would come to other devices, so that's on the horizon. Right, right, right. It's uh, all just for, it's very forward-facing. Look toward the sun. <laughs> <laughs> the sun that is the assistant. It, the I the mean, assistant sun. It, Google is the sun yeah, that lights up our day. It's true. So. Uh, also, this might this might be a little stretch, but this. But hear me out on this. Uh, is Nexus by a different name still a <laughs> Nexus? Don't be so sad because maybe Nexus isn't going anywhere after all. Maybe it's just being marketed completely differently. We had heard, I think there was a there was an interview with Hiroshi Lockheimer uh, yes. with Bloomberg last year Wait, where he Jason, I'm sorry, you mean friend of the show. Friend of the yes, show, of the Hiroshi show. Lockheimer. Okay. You're right. I appreciate that. Friend of the show, Hiroshi Lockheimer. And in fact, okay. do we have Hiroshi in studio? Oh, he's here. Excellent. Oh, he's back. He Excellent. had said in that interview, he said, I don't want to close the door completely. Completely. That's the important emphasis part. I don't want to close the door completely. Uh, but then he continued, but there's no plan right now to do more Nexus devices. Maybe the reality is that they're not doing more Nexus devices, but what they're actually doing is something called designed with our friends at Google, which is more what's going to be- Oh, more friends for LG. I don't know. Well, that's that's a good point. LG did have the friends for their LG G5. I don't think this is the same thing though, because I think what you're seeing here is this kind of like this repeated uh, marketing language of designed with our friends at Google. And when you think of of Nexus, that's kind of what they were doing, right? The the OEMs, the hardware manufacturers were working. With Google, it didn't have, it still had the OEM's names on it, but it was definitely a collaboration, a partnership uh, to create a device that's closer to what Google is hoping for. That's why they're part of this whole equation. That's what apparently we're going to see with the new LG watches. The style uh, packaging is what you saw on the screen there with that marketing. We also knew that um, last, last year, Huawei was apparently early in to potentially be the hardware partner with Google for the Pixel device. But because Google would not allow them to have branding, Huawei branding, Huawei decided to bail out. Well, they were they, like, peace out, yo. They were like, no, we're not going to do that. It's not going to be an anonymous thing, like which is ultimately what HTC ended yeah, up doing. Yeah, but I mean, and let's, let's be real. The Pixel, I just, I mean... <laughs> It's delicious. Yeah, it's just it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> being real, being real. Uh, but it's some, some, some rumors basically pointing to the possibility that Huawei is going to have some sort of a mid-range device with Google sometime this year. So call it a Nexus. Don't call it a Nexus. It's made with our friends at, at Google. Do we think this is kind of the same thing? What about this Android name? One thing? Wait, 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 wait. You're talking about mid-range yeah. phones. Then we yeah, got there's Android, Android One. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I'm know. overwhelmed. It is kind of overwhelming. Maybe, maybe well, there's, maybe there's a, there are levels to Google's love. You know, <laughs> this is why, like, this you know, is why people are scared of Android. There's too many right. like 
There's too many yeah. tears. Yeah. There's is this just, overwhelming? Like, like you're thinking about this kind of stuff, Megan? <laughs> yeah. Are we still talking about launchers? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. Yeah. Well, it's a good time to go to an email, I think. <laughs> Peter wrote in and says, I have a little information that might be useful to any Nexus 6P owners in the audience. Speaking of Nexus, there you go. A couple of days ago, my Nexus 6P fell victim to the boot loop problem, which from all my reading is uncoverable. I bought my phone from Amazon, so needed to call Huawei for service. They told me my Nexus 6P warranty had been extended for three months. That was good to hear because my phone hit the boot loop on the evening of the exact day the original warranty would have expired. Huawei told me it would take a week to 10 days to get a new phone. I did not want to be without a phone for that long. It's how I listen all about Android. Mm -hmm. So I picked up the $80 Samsung Galaxy Express Prime from AT&T to use until I get the Nexus 6P back. <laughs> and then he used it as a backup phone. He got a, he got a burner. Nice. Yeah, um, sometimes you got to get I've a been, burner. Yeah. I've been pleasantly surprised that an $80 phone works pretty well. The battery life so far has been better than my 6P, though that might not be a really fair comparison because I'm being careful about what apps I put on. So it's running significantly fewer apps. But at least for a few days, it has turned out to be a variable, very reasonable stand-in phone. And I think this brings up, you know, it's good to know that the $80 Samsung phone is a good fill-in, but brings up the good question, God forbid something happens to your phone, do you need a cheap backup just in case? Mm -hmm. Well, and on Android, if you need a cheap backup phone, yeah. they're there. They, <laughs> they exist. I mean, they're, You can buy are, one for $10 at, yeah. at CVS. Yep. To fill, to, yeah, to fill in the gap, to kind of tide you over. Sure. Uh, yeah. Or you can find a friend with a phone to let you borrow it. That too. Everybody's got a, a a drawer full of old phones, yeah. right? We aren't the only ones. What, 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 us, what was that Megan saying about us? Right? What was that Megan saying about us living in a coastal bubble? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everyone <laughs> has five phones Everyone's in their drawer. Everyone's got to draw phones, right? Yeah. So. It's like, who could be us to borrow a phone? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's also thank a sponsor while we're here. Um, we want to thank LegalZoom for sponsoring this episode of All About Android. Uh, and listen... The holidays are over, the hangover is gone, and the New Year's dust is settled. So now you can finally get around to doing the things you've been putting off for way too long. And LegalZoom.com is where you can make it happen. So whether you want to launch the business of your dreams or you'd like to take control of your family's future with an estate plan, legal questions should never stand in the way. Well, thanks to LegalZoom, they don't. The legal world can be challenging without a doubt, but that's exactly why LegalZoom was created over 15 years ago, to help you get your legal problem solved. They provide you with the tools and know-how to wrap up your legal needs with confidence. You can even receive legal advice at flat rates from LegalZoom's network of attorneys that are licensed in 48 states. They'll help you with the right estate plan or answer any questions you have about starting and running your business, all without billing by the hour since LegalZoom isn't a law firm. And I cannot underscore the importance of getting all your legal I's dotted and T's crossed when you're setting up a business. It will save you headaches in the long run. Go to LegalZoom.com, avoid mistakes. That's the, the best advice you can ever get. Um, so don't put it off any longer. Hurry to LegalZoom.com now and start getting your life in order today. Plus get special savings when you enter promo code AAA at checkout. That's LegalZoom.com and enter the promo code AAA. And of course, we thank LegalZoom for their support and for keeping us out of legal hot water. Thank you, LegalZoom. <laughs> thank right. you, LegalZoom. <laughs> All right, we ready to do some apps? What do you think? A little apps. Let's do it. Apps, 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 apps. Apps, apps, apps. So, Flo. This is exciting. This is, is it? This is an exciting news piece. I'm curious to hear your take on this. <laughs> I already know how Megan feels about this. We talked a about it a little bit on TNT, but I want to know your thoughts. All right, so there's this app called Coded Couture, which tracks how users use their device throughout the week, and it uses that data to design a unique dress that integrates those activities. This is exciting. So this is a partnership between Google and H&M's Ivy Revel label partnership. So for those who don't know, and I believe this is part of it, is H&M every year will like We'll team up with designers and do this like special run um, ah. to get people to the store. Uh, this particular project will use Android's Awareness API, which was announced last year's I/O. Kind of, this was kind of one of the quieter announcements because I had to think back into the reel of Google I/O last last year to remember this. Uh, but this will allow you to track location, recognize your activity states. So whether you're like sitting down on your bum all day or 
you know, running around up subway stairs uh, and sense nearby beacons and devices. Although I'm very curious, like where those beacons would would be, because I I don't really come across those beacons even in my yeah. little coast bubble. Yeah. Not <laughs> so, very often, but it's capable of it. Yeah. So right now this app is in closed alpha testing, uh, which makes sense because I think they would want to get this put together before the line comes to H&M. Uh, and the public release will be sometime this fall, which makes sense because that's when all the big stuff comes out. I mean, that's where the September issue idea comes from. Uh, and it will be $100 to start, which is not that bad. No, not bad that's at all. That's not a bad price point. H&M for- is a pretty inexpensive yeah, line for, of clothing, for right? Yeah, fashionistas and fashionistos. Uh, assuming this will be <laughs> fashionist dudes, fashionist dudes. Well, fa- fashionistos because oh. it's you know. Okay. I trust you. I don't actually know, so I trust you. Know. you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I re- I like this idea. This this excites me. This is how I like to see technology used so, among the masses. <laughs> so just to, just to clarify, the app tracks all your activity and yes. what you do and it all this kind of stuff. Data. That information is then taken and work, worked on somehow to create the dress. So the dress doesn't actually do the tracking or anything like that. It's like the app on the phone do, for however long, a week or whatever, tracks your unique movements and your unique use pattern, usage patterns of your device. And that informs like a very like specific signature that is then uh, put onto the dress. Yes. Um, so and Flo... So I'm a- Flo sounds Sorry. bullish on this. What do you think, Megan? Uh, I do not like this. I think that <laughs> it is typical Google. It's like, here, let me give you uh, this wonderful thing that will make your life better, easier uh, in in exchange for also taking all this information about you, where you go, what you do, what you buy, uh, your activity, and, you know, use it to advertise to you. That's what I don't like. I mean, that that is part of what I really like about uh, being on iOS. Although, admittedly, I use Google Photos and I use Gmail and I am completely in that that uh, whole ecosystem of the Google app. So, but I just don't, it's it's like one of those things where it's like, here, we, we're gonna give you something. And I do love Google Photos. I love being able to search in my photos. I love Gmail. I will, I'll pick out my own dress, thank you, if it means that I get to save some <laughs> of uh, all my, it, to keep Google from tracking me any more than it already does. But but I wonder how is this any different than a situation like Stitch Fix, which requires you to put in all of these different criteria. You have to spend time like curating your list before the designers can pick out like clothing for you. How cool would it be to have a dress that's specifically designed for the fact that like I sit down a lot, I need a dress that doesn't crinkle or like, as we discussed on last week's show, I sweat a lot. So I want, you know, material oh, that doesn't, you know, well, it well, doesn't but, give but me even, away. Yeah. And Flo, those are really great points. But even to simplify it or to counter Megan, your point, how different is this from your Apple watch telling you to go work out or stand up? Or, you know, how is it knowing that I, uh, yeah. well, yeah, I don't, it's not that I, I, I'm fine with my Apple watch telling me to work out or stand up and it does track me. That's true. But I do believe that Apple has products to sell. I'm not the product where Google doesn't have, you know, aside from the pixel, it's products are me. Well, no, that's, that's not true. But that's the, that's, that's the point. I mean, they want to yeah. get you, they want to, re- the way I see this is that, when we're going to something like H&M, which is fast fashion that has this little like this little boutique bit where you can go get these, you know, special clothing a couple times a year, uh, is that they're really appealing to this like mainstream group of people that maybe don't know technology. Like they don't know the things that Google does behind the scenes. And maybe this is their way of like seeing into it. This is also why I sort of but I sort of echo Megan's sentiments with that. This is just a way to sell me stuff. And that's where I get frustrated too. Because it's like that uh, that hairbrush that was at CES that you can brush your hair and it gives you all the information. <laughs> but it's like a $200 hairbrush that only sells you products from a one very specific brand. And that's really limiting. And that kind of sucks because it's a great use of technology in a really just, 
unfortunate way. Well, well, yeah, and I think these are these are the bumps that we're going to go on. Ultimately, yeah. this to me sounds like this is laying the groundwork for the thing that I've always wanted, which was the moment in the Jetsons when George rolls out of bed and gets on the yes. the the uh, the conveyor belt and then goes through and and, sh- and gets and shaves and showers and then clothes put on and then he's off to work. That's really this is this is the only company I see getting us to the Jetsons future that I want to live. I think about the Jetsons too, by the way, Ron. Every time we talk about something like this, I think about the Jetsons. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I think there are still, uh, I think humans, there's still things that humans are better at and that's uh, designing clothes. And I like shopping. So, I mean, I like going well, but to a nothing store. Saying, nothing saying that you can't do that. I just think that I think that the, 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 the different, what's interesting about this is that Google's taking the technology and the knowledge that they do have about you, which, which totally can see that they're tracking you and doing all this stuff and applying it in inventive ways that are innovating and trying to move things forward. It doesn't mean that we're going to move to a, you know, AI driven clothing, you know, future or anything like that. Of course, there's room for self-expression and things like that. But but I mean, you, you said you said that, you know, Google Google's product is me and that there's nothing that they don't actually make anything. Well, aside from all the hardware like Google Home and Pixel and stuff like that, for me, that the the knowledge, the the transfer or the value I get from Google for allowing them to track and have this information is that I get smart information back that's tailored to my needs. Um, which I can't tell you how many times I'm in a location and I go to and, and it knows what I'm what I'm about to ask or what I'm going to look for or suggest something. Um, and it's, you know, making it's a frictionless experience that they're working towards, which is knowledge. And the operating system of that is data and is knowledge, which I think is great, which is they're really the only company thinking about 10 years from now versus how to increase sales next quarter. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and, Counterpoint. And, and we're and we're all fooling ourselves if we don't think that 10 years from now, robots will be creating all of our clothes for us. <laughs> exactly. Well, that we're speeding towards. One last if ending if, note on this. I'm just sad this is not about Google uh, Fabric or Fiber or uh, Jacquard, whatever those Jacquard, were. Jacquard. Project yeah. Jacquard. Yeah, I want smart pants. Like, that's what I want. Yeah. I want. I want the clothes to do things for me. I don't necessarily want the technology to make the clothes. Mm-hmm. Like I Push would be turn off the notifications. Yes. Yeah. I would that's that's what I want to be able to do. Turn up the volume. I guess part of this I'm always and, and maybe Flo, you agree, I'm always suspect when there's some kind of technology like this that is directed at women only. Cause I just think mm-hmm. like, oh, there's so much other stuff that we would like rather than like I can give you a list of a thousand things I'd want before a dress design for everything I do. Cause yeah. like that's what a jacket's for. Like I want a sleeveless dress. If I go outside, I wear a jacket. Mm-hmm. I don't need a long sleeved. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe She's right. I yeah. Who's yeah, who's uh, more to blame here? Is it Google or is it H and M? I think it's, I want to know think, who to blame. I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go get a dress made though because I want to try this. Like this, I have to go see if I can get this done. <laughs> I'm very curious to see how a computer makes me a dress. I'm very finicky about dresses. I collect my dresses. Hmm. We've learned something new about you, Flo. Mm-hmm. I'm excited about the dress that you're going to get made too. Yes. Make sure to show <laughs> us. Wear it to the next uh, taping once once you get it. Turn up the volume. <laughs> exactly. Uh, people are going to think you're you're trying to get uh, whatever flakes off your shoulder. Uh, progressive web apps. How's that for a uh, segue? They are Talk growing the up. <laughs> they are the future. They're the present yeah. is what they are. Uh, and the line between native and web apps are continuing to fade away. Google has actually expanded the capabilities of web apps and now integrated them into the Android OS more than just the simple add shortcut to home screen that they were prior to this. You can tap to add it to your home screen uh, from from the particular page in Chrome. Now those web apps are going to appear in your app drawer along with all of your other apps. So they appear, so you know, you just wouldn't know uh, any different. Uh, they also have their own Android settings pane. So normally, if you were to do this and then go to settings, it would take you to Chrome settings. Well, they do this because there's all, all sorts of capabilities that progressive web apps are getting um, access to inside Android. Things like background data support, OS level controls, notification controls. So you know how you can dive into notification controls on, on an app by app basis and kind of control how those notifications surface. Now you can do that even with progressive web apps. So basically, there this is rolling out to Chrome beta uh, over the next few weeks. 
And it's kind of like a, a coming of age for progressive web apps, becoming and more like regular apps. To harken back to our conversation about native versus progressive web apps last year, towards the end of last year, if you mm -hmm. remember, I, this is an inevitable future that is happening. And actually, this is really timely because I was at an event uh, here in New York uh, at our friends from Touch Lab. And I had a great conversation with a couple of developers and designers, including friend of the show, Liam Spradlin, mm -hmm. uh, who's going to be coming back Yay! on the show, right, Jason? Yeah, yeah. In a few weeks, right? yep. Yep. And, um, and we, had a, we had a great conversation about progressive web apps versus native apps and and what's the difference and all that sort of stuff and and i mean it just it's it's such a it's such an interesting topic um and we should remember this for when liam's on because he had some unique yeah. thoughts that i don't want to steal from his thunder but uh uh but yeah no i mean the progressive web apps are coming you know and native apps are fading so google take a note <laughs> uh for when liam is on the show yeah yeah <laughs> right remind me when liam is on the show to ask him about this all right, Ron, you got the last one. I do, I do, I do. I feel like we talked about this last oh. week too, but oh, did we? But, um, if we did, then I we don't need to read it. Uh, possibly, just you know, it's the fact that uh, App Annie, uh, the app tracking service, uh, noted that oh, Google Al Google's Allo app has fallen out of the top 500 in the Play Store repeatedly in the past five weeks. Um, and you know, some Jason actually, you tweeted about this last week, saying. Uh, and I thought it meant that they were killing Allo, but they weren't. You were no. just saying, you know, oh, too bad. Um, but yeah, so basically, they're not killing it, Ron. <laughs> they're not killing Yet. it. It's just, not it's just not my precious yeah. Allo. It's just not going say, anywhere. I will say, I've been using it a lot to text my to text with my niece, who my youngest niece, who just got an iPad, and the only way she can message me is via Allo, and it's been it's been a blast using that. So. Mm. I wonder why, I mean, why, like, I can understand if Google rolls out an app that it's really behind and it's within the top 100 and nowhere near, the, you know, the top one or 10 or whatever, which is where they would love their apps to hit, I'm sure, because that would be a, a raging success. But I mean, top 500, like that's, here's, that's failure, I think. At here's that. why, that's, here's why. This didn't work. I no, I think they rolled it. I think they ro they rolled it out too early, and or they're not iterating fast enough on it. The fact that it rolled out without SMS support yeah, or without a a, or without a, without a web client was a, an immediate non-starter for a lot of hardcore Android users. And so, you know, not to mention the, on the other side with iOS, you know, like that's the everything that was great about Allo was immediately hamstrung out of the gate. Yeah, I am nodding my head so hard. <laughs> Don't give yourself five, a headache. High five. High five. We got it. We got it. Just well, I didn't even grants with Ron. <laughs> I don't know anyone who uses Allo. You don't even really use it. I mean, no. Flo, we could have Alloed. Uh, I would have Alloed for last have. month, but instead we Facebook Messenger and we use Twitter DM. I mean, that is I, why we use that instead of something that could also, like we could send stickers to each other. I, I don't know. This, this goes back to the messaging problem is that yeah. is that we just we've did we've blue messaging and this is just another sad chapter in it. And, and, and it's just very it, disappointing. Guys. We got yeah, everything, we almost everything else going for us except messaging. Yeah, <laughs> and try as Google, try as Google might, it just doesn't seem to come out with the right combination of features. Or maybe it's just ultimately at this point way too late to even write the ship. You know what I mean? <laughs> they're just like there's just so, there's so much choice out. now. Oh. Everybody has their platform that they already chat on. So to come out with another new. Uh, major, you know, effort is just, it's hard to convince anyone to switch, period. I'm going to make that my personal mission to allo everyone. Okay. I can't wait. my words. From I, iOS? I, yeah. I can't wait to see the stickers. Okay. I'll be eagerly awaiting. <laughs> okay. To see. Yes. I mean, everyone has to have a, uh, you know, a purpose a in mission, life. A mission, a mission in life. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll be your next monthly challenge. Yes. Let's do that. Every right. month we'll have a challenge. Yeah. And then I'm going to march on Washington <laughs> for Allo. Okay. Excellent. Oh, geez. Oh, you know, my gosh. To coordinate that. What color hats should we wear? <laughs> I don't know. What is yellow. the color of Allo? Yellow. Would be yellow. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> All right. Let's take a, a quick break to thank another sponsor of this episode, and that is Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Uh, you know, we, we have a house. We had to go through a, a mortgage process to get our house. It was not the easiest thing in the world, but 
obviously we're super happy because at the end of that rainbow, we're living in a wonderful, beautiful home. Uh, but you know, the process to get there, the mortgage process is not without its issues. Pulling all that information is not the easiest thing in the world. Uh, well, when it comes to the big decision of choosing a mortgage lender, that's kind of the, the starting point right there is who are you going to get that mortgage from? It's going to make it easier for you. Who can you work with uh, that you can trust that has your best interest in mind? With Rocket Mortgage, you'll get a transparent online process that gives you the confidence to make an informed decision. So you're not going to waste time searching through stacks of paperwork. With Rocket Mortgage, you can securely share your financial information to get a mortgage approval in minutes. And you can even play around with the numbers as you're going through the process. You can adjust the rate, you can adjust the length of your loan, all in real time to get up-to-date information as far as what that means, the kind of right you know, choosing the right mortgage solution for you. Whether you're looking to buy a home or refinance your existing mortgage, you can lift the burden of getting a home loan with Rocket Mortgage. So skip the bank, skip the waiting, go completely online at quickenloans.com slash Android. That's quickenloans.com slash Android. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states and MLS consumer access .org, number 3030. And we thank Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans for their support. And now, I know this is the moment you've been waiting for, Megan, because it, this is this is history in the making, folks. It's the <laughs> Android Arena. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. Arena. So let's see here. So I'm going to check in on my phone. It, did the update finish? <gasps> I can I can install my update to Nougat. Should I do it? Right now, right before the arena, yeah. should I do it? During the show, good yeah. idea. Okay, all right. No, I won't do it. It's going to take a long time. Yeah. Uh, let's check in on last week's poll, bit.ly slash AAA vote 303. And I have not taken a look, to be honest. Uh, I don't even think I've placed my vote, so I'll go ahead and vote for mine. Mm. Oh, do you always, you're allowed Jeez. to vote for yourself? You are allowed to vote for yourself. Yes. You are. Yep. Uh, Ryan's for, allowed to vote for me. And checking in, we can see that. Big win. Big, big win, win for, for Flow. For Roller Coaster Tycoon. Yeah. As it should have been. Mm. Dang. Whatever. Was that? Oh. Whatever, so, Flo. No, that was a really good win. Uh, that was a great win. Yeah, very good. Roller you coaster. guys are so obsessed. I've been playing it like every single night. i kind of fallen behind on my Pokemon. <laughs> I mean, you can't have too many games that you swap between, right? I only have two games on my tablet because... There's no point in having any other games. It's Roller Coaster Tycoon and Pokemon, the card game online. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon, big win, 37.9% of the votes. Uh, second place is Mountain Goat Mountain, of course, 28.1%. Uh -huh. oh, well, happy for that. Third place, Sound Off Reborn 2017. That was my app, 27 point, or sorry, 23.9%. And then fourth place, I thought Corner Fly was going to get more wrong. I thought, yeah, Apparently, I'm so, I, people I, I don't care about rounded corners. I could see that Cornerfly was a very niche product. I understand that. But what's what I'm more excited about with Flow is Win, we just illustrate how exciting the new point system to yeah. the arena is. Because now, uh, thanks to Wade County in the chat room, the, the current standings are I am still in first place with 16 points, which is great. <laughs> the guests are in second with 15. But you might remember Flow was in last place. And now with that one win, she's in third with 11 points. And Jason is now in last with 10. So it's neck and neck. And it really is anybody's game at this point. This is yeah, fun. Yeah. I like this. And even <laughs> and even though you came in last, you still get a little point. Right. Yeah. Right. Like I mean, it, this, this is it's, great. I'm, it's, it's very exciting. It's very exciting. Yes. I think, I, I think we then, did a good yeah. job here. Yeah. This, was a good, yeah, this was a good move. All right. So <laughs> without that further ado. I'm first because I came in first. last. Yep. All right. Well, um, this was a this was an app that I uh, it was a last minute kind of switcheroo. I had another app that was uh, boring, uh, and I thought this one was more interesting. <laughs> that was a smart um, move, Ron. <laughs> well, yeah, the but this are is, high so this now. Is, so this is a this is a new this is a brand new app. It's only if you look in the app store, it's only got a hundred to five hundred downloads. So it's an opportunity for us to help a developer, um, and it is a very simple app that does one thing, and it does it very elegantly. And it is called Morning. It's called uh, Morning News. What is it called? No, I'm morning sorry, reader. Yeah, morning, morning Reader. I'm sorry, Morning Reader. And if you're like me or anybody, a lot of other people, when you wake up, you immediately go to your phone and you start scanning. You see what messages you got while you're sleeping. But often, sometimes a lot of people look to Twitter or look to um, or look to other sources to see what's going on in the world. Morning News um, is focused on, purely on tech. 
So this is specifically for people like us who are really into tech news, but it is just in in the absence of Google Reader and the death of RSS for feeds and things like that, this is a curated list of the top stories that are going on in, news, um, in the tech news. Um, and then you can scroll through like Jason was just doing, and if you tap on one, it just opens in a contained browser. You can choose, you know, there you go, you got multiple browser choices. Um, but it opens within Chrome within there and you go right to the story, simple as that. Um, and allows you to scroll back and forth. Um, if you go back, you go back to that. You see, and you just yeah, get the straight list. It tells you how sources, yeah, yeah, how long, the, how long, how long ago it was posted, that sort of thing. Um, and then what you can do is it, when you hit the hamburger menu, you can take a look and you can see what the top stories are, um, or you can take a look at the river, which is just the the kind of flow of stories. Or you can take a look at the the daily kind of briefing, which is um, all the one, all the ones rolled up within a single day, kind of uh, a day view of the most important stories according to the curation at at uh, Morning Reader. Um, and what's neat is that if you go and check out uh, their website, they've got more than just this going on. They've got they're doing some curation. They've got a newsletter that you can subscribe to. They also have a bot that you can interact with, which is kind of neat. So they're looking for these are neat different ways to interact with the news. And I feel like this is the beginning of what could be an interesting news app. Um, like I said, right now it's just focused on tech, but I imagine they're going to roll out uh, other topics uh, sooner rather than later. So uh, this is an opportunity to get on board and start using it. It's it's just clean, elegant, pretty, and makes that easy when you're laying in bed and going through your phone to see what are the top headlines that you need to see before you get started with your day. So nice. I just downloaded that on my iPad, <gasps> Ron cool. Richards. It I very love cool. it. It is. Very, I really cool. like it. Yep. Morning Reader also nice. on the iPad. Nice. Yes, it's cross platform. So. Are you allowed to support other people's? Are you allowed to vote for other people and encourage them, or is this really sure? Just... Yeah, okay. you can vote that's for whatever you want. Okay. That's sports. Sure. That's all okay. good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. All right, so morning Excellent. reader, free in the Google Play Store. Go check it out. All right, fantastic. There that you go. Morning reader. All right, um, mine. Okay, I'm up next, and then it'll be Megan. Uh, mine is a game by this little scrappy startup. You may have heard of them. They're called Nintendo. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> really good opportunity to support the Yeah, Nintendo really. Games. Just go out and support these guys. Really like what they're doing, and I don't want them to go anywhere. Um, so this game is called Fire Emblem Heroes, and it kind of, like, I'm, I have no um, history with this kind of series in the way that I do with Super Mario and everything. And, I'm you know, I'm, I'm eagerly anticipating the day when Super Mario Run is released on Android. I think it's going to happen sometime next month. Well, they released, a Nintendo released this game, I think, last week. I can't remember if it was Android first or simultaneously Android and iOS. I think it's simultaneously because it's on both platforms. Uh, so they didn't do what they did with Super Mario Run uh, by delaying it on Android. This time, they released it on both platforms. And this this game, Fire Emblem Heroes, really feels like a it's a lot of a lot of fun as a mobile game but it really feels like Nintendo embracing the style of gameplay that mobile is is good for and uh, so I'll go ahead and jump in it's kind of a turn-based strategy style uh, battle game essentially kind of like chess but you know with with different characters and it revolves around the idea that as you can see down here green is uh, green beats blue blue beats red red beats green and that on that only really matters when let's say this red guy if i wanted to attack uh a green opponent up here i would be able to take off more hit hit points off of that person by attacking them than if i was to use this person and attack a blue person that uh, a, a blue opponent that actually has more uh more capability in that regard so you kind of have to as you play through you follow uh, the gameplay with that in mind. Having said that, sometimes you can only go so far. Um, unfortunately, I'm, I'm further into the game than is probably good for showing off the capabilities of the game, but you can see an enemy just came towards me. Every once in a while, I'll end up fighting back. Uh, maybe that'll happen this next time. Ooh, four off of me, no. All right, the enemy's just kind of kicking my butt at this point. Uh, but... All of the levels, you can kind of go through story mode. There you can see I got back at him. Um, as you go through the story mode, you know, there are different, different landscapes of gameplay, different, um, different strategies that you have to use. Sometimes you'll encounter... Here, I'll go ahead and uh, attack somebody. Sometimes you'll encounter, like, rivers or bridges that you have to kind of maneuver around in order to get to your opponent, whatever. And it's just kind of fun to, to wander through and... I don't know. I'm sure there are a lot of games like this, but I feel like I feel like this is a pretty addicting 
uh, style of game that Nintendo's done a great job rolling it out on mobile, and I've been playing a lot more than I expected to. It does kind of have a little bit of that grind element to it, where you got to kind of churn through in order to build up your characters and kind of move on and everything. And if you really want to, you could certainly drop drop some cash uh, in there to kind of speed the process along. But um, I don't. I don't do that. I just play the game and have a good time, and I like it. So it's called Fire Emblem Heroes. It's Nintendo's latest game. It's on Android, and you should check it out. There's a lot. There's a lot of gameplay. Nintendo is actually committed to updating this on a monthly basis. They have basically like monthly challenges uh, every month. So uh, check it out and see what you think. I really like it. It's called Fire Emblem Heroes. All right, Megan, unlock your device because yours is. Yours is special. It is. It's on You're, Daydream. Do I put it in there or so, no? Okay, so unlock your device. We'll go into the home app and we will Chromecast. It says charging slowly. Oh, uh, we'll unplug it. Uh oh. Somebody uh -oh. needs a fast charger. Uh, okay. So go into the home app and we will. The home app? Yeah, that was the one here. I'll show okay. you. I, I got there earlier. Oh, the Chrome. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, Chromecast. Yeah, this one shaped like a home. Yeah, and then we'll cast screen and we'll cast. And I think here, let me get now that that's guy. going, you can probably unplug the power and just throw it in your. Are you okay. getting the video now, Brian? Brian's getting the video, so you just do your okay your app yeah. like you normally would. So I guess. this is called Star Chart VR. Yes, it's, it costs five dollars. I think it's worth it. Um, <laughs> I would agree. I've played around okay. with Star Chart VR. Uh, I actually like it a lot. This is like a uh, thank you. There it you is like you're in a planetarium. Um, and you can go to the moon or you can go uh, to the sun and it doesn't take the long, you know, the same amount of time that it would actually take you to go to the moon really? or the sun. No, <laughs> you can go to Mars. You can go there like right away. Yeah. So, basically. okay. Um, All right. Instant the best part about this, the best part about this is we get to watch Megan yeah. in VR. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are right now we're, we're Chromecasting the pixel. Uh, into the TriCaster to show okay, off Star Chart see? VR once okay. we get there. Yep, I just we can have to trust it. you. We can see it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, trust you that you're not like making bunny ears or anything. You can see. Uh, okay, so let's hope that it... Come on, oh, Star Chart. Can you see it or not? I can't see it either. And I'm totally not making bunny ears right now. Okay. <laughs> I was about to out you, Jason. I oh. didn't give you a second to out yourself. Yeah, for some reason, did the, did the video go away? Or? Did the battery die? Oh, no. There we go. There, there we, we go. go. Okay. So, um, so oh, yeah. playing around with this. You know what I think is happening because what? your battery is kind of low? That it's... Is that I think it's probably ramped down on performance yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Oh, where did it go? Uh, oh, there it's we the, go. the left. There we go. So we'll hope. <laughs> oh, I know. I, I'm still not sure which buttons to press. I yeah, think I, I get it. confused with that with the okay, Daydream so, controller too. Uh, it is so amazing. Like if you like planetariums and if you like space or if you have kids that like to, yeah, I don't know that it's going to work with the battery. Should I plug it back in? Here, don't move. I think I'm it would just be interesting move. just to watch Let's me with these uh, on. There, it's going to get really hot. Helps. Let's see if yeah, that helps. It's, it's going to get, yeah, that it does get hot. Yeah, it does. So do, do you get hot face with the Pixel in Daydream uh, sometimes? I got a little bit of hot face. Okay. Is that what you, that's the official word I don't know it? if that's the official word, but that's what I call it because it makes my face it. hot. We're hot face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes my face hot. Um, so. so you use the controller. You can find out information about the planet, how far away it is from you. You can just point the controller at different things. Uh, in space, so you can you know see what's out there, or mm -hmm. point things at the planet, so you can see the different um, moons around a planet, or the different uh, geography of a planet, which is I really like great. This feature. Yes, being uh, able to being able to look around in the sky and see the different constellations, and that's where it really feels like you're in a planetarium. Mm -hmm. Like, ooh. And then if you can't, I mean, you don't have to actually just look around for planets. You can use the controller to um, just kind of search around and like, oh, I want to go to Mercury. There's Mercury. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to know where Mercury is in space. Mm -hmm. But if you do, that's really interesting. And if you give it your location information, you can look up, you know, and see what is actually up in the sky. Um, it is amazing because you're not just sitting in a, you don't look around in VR and think you're in a planetarium. Like you feel like you're in space. Yeah. Especially when you're kind of zooming around, like you choose to go to a planet mm -hmm. and it kind of counts down a little bit and then ramps up and, and shoots you out into space mm -hmm. to, to take you closer there. You don't just appear in front of the planet. It's like you kind of, 
it's you have a jetpack and you fly through space in order to get there and everything moves around you and uh, just kind of makes it a lot more immersive because of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah it, might, it might actually. Let's see yeah, if it. Maybe. I think the battery. Yeah. The battery. Um, I'm sorry. Battery. I did not charge my battery. That was a rookie move. Um, Welcome to Android. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that iPhone 7 battery, it lasts should for we, three weeks. Sh should we play the arena intro again to remind Megan that only the many will enter, only one will leave? I know. Oh. <laughs> I know. Oh, oh, no. No. <laughs> but only one leaves. <laughs> well, you know what? To, to be completely honest, we've all, we've all brought apps into the arena and yes, you, you start to demo it and it it just doesn't work the way you we've think it's going there, to. Yeah. We've yeah. all been there. We've all been there. So, but this is a fantastic amazing. app. It is, uh, if you like space, if you want to travel to Mars or Mercury or the sun uh, and not, you know, waste the rest of your life or burn up, then- mm, That's um, important. Yeah, yeah. Then you should definitely try it. Yeah, or go to school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you want to, um, great for homeschoolers. <laughs> 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 is that a plus in the arena? <laughs> that helps, yes. And I, sure. I, I noticed you guys all groaned when I said it cost five dollars, but it did we? Did you? Or did I just hear that? Was yeah. that my inner voice that groaned? I don't know. I, I don't groan. I don't groan at VR apps being five dollars because I expect to have to pay for that kind of technology. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Thank that you. Makes sense. And yeah. also probably have more than fifteen percent of battery. Probably a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, and okay. not be Chromecasting it to another computer at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeez. <laughs> hey, but this, this, is just, this is just part of the arena. It happens. Star Chart VR <laughs> is fantastic. I played around with it a lot uh, in Daydream, and it's definitely one of my picks as well. So, Good choice. Like it. Uh, Flo, you're up next. I got yours. Yeah, I about to say I can't show you from over here well you know I already told you guys about Cannibal the app that lets you know what Congress is doing while you're at work well this is called five calls and this is the actual way to get a hold of your representatives so what you do is you're you know you got to make your five calls per day right to 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 be a part of what's going on behind the scenes. You mean about getting people to use Allo, right? <laughs> yes. You yeah, really not finding that, that, that issue Allo. here. <laughs> not finding right, Allo really in here at all. Allo. So you want to call <laughs> the congressperson who is going to vote in favor of Allo to keep it in the apps, the Play Store. And then when you scroll down to the bottom of that screen, Jason Howell. It says oh. no. Yeah, no for calls. some reason, Go this one says calls. no calls. I'll just show, go. You can show the fine viewers. Oh, okay. So, yes. oh, so you scroll down and now you know who to call. Yes, and now and now you know who to call. And when, and when you tap that number, it'll take you to the dialer app. Okay, I'm not going to go And you can there, make your yep. call. Nice. And leave your message. And it gives you a script. And it gives you the script of what to say. It gives it all for you right there in the app. Um, so why on that other one did it say that I couldn't call? It said it was already checked. It said no calls yeah, left for this issue. Does that I mean? I think it's already been voted on. Uh, oh, okay. Possibly. Or just nobody wants to listen to you. It says two calls <laughs> made, two two calls to make, three calls to make. Okay, interesting. Uh, and yeah, it's the the situations presented in the app are are curated. Yeah, that's that is, that is curated. That is obvious. But uh, <laughs> it's definitely curated. You know, it's there for those of you who are interested in calling your representatives on certain issues. It's a tool to get involved if you feel like you need tool to, to get involved. Um, yes. All righty. Five calls oh. is free in the Play Store. Uh, if, uh, I don't know, I, I think everybody wants to be involved to some in some degree yeah. uh, in in their politics, no matter where you stand. And it's good to, if, if you feel strongly about things, uh, be involved in some way. They say that calling is the best way to do that. Sending emails and stuff like that is maybe more convenient, but uh, is and I mean, easy, if you don't easier lost in, in the shuffle. So you don't have to read the script from the app. You could just... 
Tell I'm, your representative whatever you need. Yeah, but I, I appreciate that there's a script there because sometimes like I sometimes I feel like I want to make a call about this, that, or the other thing, but I don't know exactly what I want to say, but I know how I feel, but I don't know how to put that into words. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So uh, this seems like a, a good way to, if you agree with the issues that are listed in the app. If you're concerned like with the issues that are listed in the aforementioned app, it's nice to know there are no real losers anymore in Android App Arena. <laughs> <laughs> We're all winners. It's good to participate. Participate in democracy. That's what it's for. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. Precisely. Five calls. That's the number five and calls. It's an app and it's free in the Play Store. So you can place your vote for your favorite app this week. Is it Morning Reader? Is it Fire Emblem Heroes? Is it Star Chart VR? Is it Five Calls? Place your vote. Go to bit.ly slash triple A vote. 304. I believe that's the one I picked anyways. Yeah. Triple A vote 304. And uh, place your vote. Let us know what you think. And I we'll... know what Brian's going to vote for. <sighs> you think he, so, huh? Is he? No, I, I do know. I don't think it's going to. I don't think it's mine, but I know what you're going to. Brian, oh. likes, Brian likes tech news. Oh, oh. yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, wow. Brian, but... I don't know you that well then. What did he vote for? Fire, Fire Emblem Heroes? Heroes? Yes. I've played some of the other Fire Emblem games, so oh, it looks, okay. I'm willing to give yeah. that one a shot. Oh, hey, Jason, yeah. Jason do we want to have other as a field in the poll there? Oh, is that there? Yeah, there's yeah. other as an option. Oh, uh, don't use other. I'm going <laughs> to delete that. What if people don't like any of them? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not don't possible. Vote. <laughs> <laughs> there should always be an other option. Oh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll delete that. Not in the arena. Only four will enter. Only one will leave. That's how. That's how it's. It's in the. It's in the intro. That's how it goes. Okay. So. Well, now I know how this works. I'm just going to show up in the arena time with another app next time and <laughs> I, a charge. Yeah, we're going to the. Oh, hey, Megan. You're more than welcome. What, as what long are you doing as here, here, Megan? <laughs> uh, appreciate you coming on. This is a lot of fun. Thank you for having me. It it's, was fun. Th this is what uh, Tuesday night is like uh, when you wake up first thing in the morning and start working on. The normal shows, mm -hmm. and then you're here this late into Tuesday night. It's a long day. Yeah. But it's fun. I right. have to say it was really nice to have you here, though. I really like having your perspective on the show because... We're we're Second in our own little Android bubble. Yeah, you agreed. Have, we never leave. <laughs> you oh, are. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Having Megan here is great. I could I could argue about Google using our data for hours with <laughs> right. you, Megan. It's always I know. a joy. I was gonna <laughs> make a counterpoint, but I'll save I'll save it for the next time. I'll come on TNT. Yeah. I'll come on TNT okay. again, and we could do we could do okay. that. Yeah. And I hope there's a next time, Megan. Always feel welcome to stay late here with us on mm -hmm. Tuesday nights. Thank That's you. Right. That's right. Thank you. Sometimes uh, we have alcohol. <laughs> Sometimes. I don't know why we don't tonight. Uh, yeah, that doesn't happen so often these days. Uh, we want people to know about uh, kind of your, your doings on, on the network and online and all that. Uh, well, TNT, every day with you, you get to have more we of us. That. We don't sit so close together. I know. Um, it's so weird. I know it is. It is. Uh, and did you demand what? the chairs this close? <laughs> <laughs> and iOS today, uh, every uh, Monday, uh, and I know some people use Android phones and iPads. So, and a lot of Android users also watch iOS today just because, um, I look like that. Because of that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> That's my what Android that? face. That's your Android face? <laughs> is that a Snapchat filter? It's a Snapchat filter. Okay. I think it's that more That made me giggle. That was amazing. <laughs> Thank you for that. I think it's more of a frog than an Android, but it's as okay. close as I could get. Uh, thank you for welcoming me uh, into your Android bubble, all three of you. I really appreciate well, Welcome it. to the green bubble. <laughs> 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 Anytime, Megan. This is awesome. Thanks for coming on. Uh, Ron, what about you? Yes, you can uh, follow me on Twitter at RonXO, and there I'll post about all inane things that you won't understand, but you might understand my other podcasts over, uh, ones over at iFanboy, where we're talking about comic books every uh, Sunday, as well as we're talking about the Lego Batman movie. We're talking about uh, new TV shows like Powerless and Legion. Uh, a lot of great stuff there. If you're, in a, if you're in a, into comic book nerddom, that's where you want to go. Uh, iFanboy.com. And, of course, Brian's new favorite podcast, yeah. uh, Damn Fine Podcast at damnfinepodcast.com, where me and Tom Merritt are revisiting and analyzing Twin Peaks uh, very excited. We got some cool guests coming up, uh, and yeah, we're we're just counting down the the weeks until we get through season two before season three starts in May. So if you like Twin Peaks, please check out Damn Fine Podcast. Excellent, definitely do that. Flo, what about you? Well, I uh, I've been hunkered down here at uh, 
In the bunker? Flow cave. Hunker, hunkered in the bunker? <laughs> I was gonna say flow. I was gonna say flow HQ. I was gonna say flow HQ, but I like the flow cave better. The yeah, cave. It, well, it is kind of a cave. It gets kind of muggy in here if I have the heater on for too long. <laughs> uh, but you know, that's beside the point. You can find me on Snapchat and Twitter at Oh That Flow. Uh, I just got a my Chromebook just came today, so <gasps> I'm gonna be exploring its wonders on social media. So nice. that's gonna be happening. Excellent, and bring yes. it in next week. I want to see it. Yes, I will. Actually. And of course, do do come. Do come to AndroidCentral.com. Absolutely. AndroidCentral.com where you write lots of things <laughs> and share your ideas and your thoughts lots on Android. Things. Lots uh, of things. Also, you're on new screensavers this weekend, right? I am also on the new screen. And I reminded you to remind me before the show. It's okay. I got and you I back. Yes, I will be on the new screensavers this weekend. So please, if you can email in any Android questions that you have, that's why I'm on the show to help answer your questions about Android. So please send them in to new screensavers at twit.tv. New screensavers, twit screensavers. <laughs> new screensavers <laughs> at twit.tv. That's right. Okay. Or you can tweet me, honestly, or you can tweet me and I will pass it along to the powers that be. There it is, Need Tech. If help you really don't want to write an email, screensavers at twit. You can always TV. tweet me. Excellent. Thank you. I, I do read things, even if I'm not, which sometimes is a bad thing. Maybe sometimes I shouldn't be reading Twitter, but anyway. Thank you, Flo. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Brian? Uh, well, I do a show called Know How that I think you're more aware of now, Jason, because we mm -hmm. kind of did a crossover episode. Uh, what? Is this like a Buffy Angel crossover episode kind of thing going on here? Totally. If that meant that they played video games on that episode, because uh, Jason brought in his MAME cabinet, we talked about how he set that up, and we kind of went over uh, setting up Raspberry Pis to play uh, emulators and stuff like that. I think that's going to be this Thursday is going to be coming out. We pre-recorded oh, it nice. last week. So uh, check that out. And also, if you want to see weird photos like this, you can always follow me on oh Twitter. Oh, my God. You look amazing underscore. as a woman. He really <laughs> does. Go ahead and take my product shot real quick, Brian. Oh, <laughs> God. Oh. Because I went oh, ahead and did one for Ron. Oh, hey oh, oh, you're such a cute girl, Ron. So, oh, that's... This is only on that's iOS, so, by the way. You can't have this because you're Android. Oh, you're that's such so a, disturbing. Such that's a, oh that's Ron. Ron. That's, you look like a cheerleader. That's hot Ron. See how uh, like, like, no difference. This is different. this is Lady Ron, he and totally, this is this is old. This is well, that's this, weird. That is an like, old guy. Is that old? Guy? You kind of look like David Lynch right there. Yes, it's, it's a little like David Lynch. Yeah, yeah so that's like, old. It, totally. Kind of looks like I got punched in the face there. Let's do young, young Ron. Eh, no difference. Eh, no different. Not no. really. Because he's already. Uh, so I don't know. About, I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but is it weird that I I I think I'm kind of hot? <laughs> yeah. No, that's not you weird. Mean girl, you is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah Brian's is actually freaking me out a yeah, little bit. Kind of looks like Taylor Swift, to be honest. It just, yeah, <laughs> it looks too good. It's yeah. Uh, On that note, I don't. I don't know if you noticed or not, <gasps> but uh, oh, oh look you at got that. the shirt. Uh, that's yeah. awesome. Wow, it fits you. <laughs> I accidentally ordered extra you. large, so it's too big for me. I was going to say, it looks really big on you. <laughs> wow. Uh, so, yeah, apparently I've got an extra large shirt. Uh, but, hey, all about Android shirts, twit.tv slash store. There's actually uh, shirts and, and stuff for lots of our shows. So go there, twit.tv slash store. Uh, you can find me at about.me slash Jason Howell. My music at yellowgoldmusic.com. Oh, and by the way, we got a picture of someone. Huh? Uh, yeah, it's right underneath the twit.tv store uh, thing. Eric oh. A. on Twitter sent um, sent a picture oh. of his awesome sweatshirt. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, Brian, Here we go. Brian thinks it's pretty awesome. If you click it, it'll full screen it. And yeah, we'll start the whole cool. dang thing. We've got a hoodie, too. That looks sharp. Look at that thing. It's snazzy. I like it. Looks pretty awesome. So It's a good anyways, luck. You can get that. Twit.tv slash store. But that's it. That's, wow, we've gone long. That's yeah. much better than Google powered H and M clothes. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's all you really. We'll need. see about that. Right. But and they will also track you. These shirts, right? <laughs> no, they are sending back. We don't track your location for these shirts. No, not at all. Not yes. at all. Uh, but that is it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this and every week. Leave us a voicemail three four seven show AAA. Maybe share your thoughts on switching between Android and iOS. I don't know. Uh, send us an email or video mail AAA at twit.tv. 
We are at Android Show on Twitter. We have a subreddit, twitaaa.reddit.com. Show notes and past episodes can be found at twit.tv slash aaa. You can also find our episodes all over, uh, YouTube, iTunes, Pocket Cast, wherever you catch your podcasts. And you can catch us live every Tuesday starting sometime around 5.30 p.m. Pacific at twit.tv slash live. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android. Have a great week, everyone. Bye. I feel like you should high five. I know. Oh, high, well, high five? Yeah. yeah.